In this video we're going to be talking about the Wolf and about its capabilities, the fittings that I recommend, and some basic flying procedures and tactics of how you're going to fly the ship. I'm going to discuss tactics and uh, ideal targets more in a uh, later video and in the tactical cheat sheet that will come along with this. But for right now let's just talk about the Wolf and, and get to know the Wolf as a ship and get to know what we can do with it and uh, the different things we should do, shouldn't do, its capabilities, where it's good, where it's not so good, all that kind of stuff. So let's start, let's look at the bonuses. All right, if I can never get it to show up, there we go. Now I'm an EFT, and if you don't know, this is EVE Fitting Tool. Um, it's a third party application. You download it off the EVE Online's forum, forums. Be careful not to download a uh, version from somewhere else other than the forums because you're likely to get a uh, version with a virus or a uh, Trojan or something like that in there. So nonetheless, this is probably the best program uh, for helping you uh, get better in EVE Online at PvP and missions too. Um, it helps you to understand the ships and it helps you to find ship setups that work well for different situations and as you play with it, a lot of people get addicted to it. I know I did for a long time. Um, I would spend hours not even playing the game, just sitting here in EFT, trying different setups, comparing different ships, um, trying to counter different ships, learning how each ship worked, the strengths, the weaknesses. It's a huge thing, but this isn't an EFT video. Nonetheless, I suggest if you don't have it yet, make sure you go get it um, right you know, as soon as you get done watching this video. But first, let's look at the bonuses. Right, there we go. All right, the bonuses, the standard bonuses for the wolf. You already have level 5 Mimitar Frigate. So you're definitely going to get 5% to small projectile turret damage and 7.5% bonus to small projectile turret tracking. So that equals a 25% bonus to uh, damage right there and a 37.5% damage uh, bonus to tracking. So you're going to track pretty good. Uh, you got the 200 millimeter auto cannons on there, so not amazing, but you'll track pretty good. Uh, you probably, you know, we'll talk more about tracking in a minute, but uh, not the greatest tracking, but pretty good. Better than, uh, better than a lot of uh, assault ships. Next, you have the assault ship bonus, and that's a 10% fall off, which means that basically you're going to do more damage at your realistic ranges because you're never going to fight within optimal with the wolf. I mean, almost never. It'll be rare that you're going to be able to maintain that that kind of a close proximity. Um, just because it just doesn't happen very often unless you're both sitting still. So most of the time you'll be fighting in fall off. The longer distance you fall off, the more DPS you effectively do to the target. So that's, for all intents and purposes, that's a, a DPS bonus. Uh, and then you have another DPS bonus down there, 5% all small projectile damage per level. So lots of damage bonuses. I mean, every bonus on the ship is oriented towards hitting the other ship harder, hitting it more often, and hitting it at long, longer distances. So this entire ship, the Wolf, is geared towards doing damage. I mean, that's what it's all about. The whole ship's built around one simple thing, and that is to go out and put out lots and lots of damage, lots of DPS. So keep that in mind throughout this whole thing. So the final one is a, a bonus that all assault ships get, and that's a 50% reduction to micro warp drive signature radius penalty. Now what that does is it makes it so you can run a micro warp drive without making the ship huge. So think of it this way. With uh, the micro warp drive off, you can see the signature of the wolf is 33 meters. I'm, I'm going to show you some stuff about that in a minute. But that's very small for a ship in EVE. That's very small for a frigate. It's one of the smallest, smallest ships in the game. Um, 33 meters, it's not even going to take full damage from another frigate um, with perfect tracking. So size is a big deal. Now, the bonus means that when you turn your micro warp drive on, it doesn't flare as much as it used to. Like, uh, I can probably show you an example. Let's just take a random ship here. And let's throw on a micro warp drive. You see right now 45 meter signature. jumps up to 270 right with the micro drive on with the wolf 33 116 so it's not near as much of a penalty to your size as it would be without that bonus and that's important 
because that means you can run in the past you had to run afterburners on salt ships you didn't have to but you wouldn't be able to do much unless you did it was uh, it was tough to run a micro warp drive and that meant if you can't run a micro warp drive you, you can't escape a lot of the situations you're likely to run into like gate camps and stuff like that so the, adding this bonus in the recent patch made a big difference and made assault ships a lot more viable all right so those are the bonuses for the ship we know the ship's built around dps we know that it's built around doing damage and dropping other ships quickly so let's look at the setups that i use now in most of my videos you're gonna see i'm using this setup here active it's a uh, small armor repair uh, explosive hardener that's important um warp scram i use the j5b instead of the tech 2 because of cpu and it's almost as good it has less capacitor capacitor demands so i highly recommend the j5b um micro warp drive best tech one named gives you a little bit better capped uh capacitor than the tech 2 uh, 200 millimeter auto cannons uh, just you want as much damage as you can get and as much range as you can get bigger guns have uh bigger ranges making them a little bit more flexible um, and then the nas to help keep your tank running and two damage rigs to, to boost damage but keep in mind here look at the cap with everything running you've got 35 seconds that's not very good um, that's terrible but truth is you're not going to run your micro warp drive most of the time most of the time you're going to get in orbit at 500 and then you're just going to stop you're, you're going to turn off the micro warp drive and just orbit at 500 at your base speed of 411 if you get webbed then you turn on the micro warp drive and that let's show you with the tech 2 web and a micro warp drive on you're still doing 983 meters a second which at 500 meters is enough to avoid tracking from cruiser sized guns and up so you're still avoiding most of their damage the reality of the wolf is that in 80 to 90 percent of your fights your incoming damage is going to be coming from drones that's what's going to be hitting you most other stuff won't be hitting you as long as you're moving um, so that's where the explosive hardener comes in on the setup and I like it if you're taking on ships that have a lot of drones because most people fit warrior twos which do explosive damage so if you have the explosive hardener you can not only fill the explosive hole see it's 41.9 percent resist you can fill that hole and you can bump it up to a really high level and you can even overload it and go even higher than that so if you've got a bunch of warrior twos on you you can greatly decrease the amount of damage that they're doing to you just by running that hardener that's the idea um, most of the time I wouldn't run it I'd never run the hardener unless I was taking warrior two damage because uh, other weapons don't tend to do explosive in most cases um, of course there are case by case you know issues there so most of the time it really run like this with a 47 sustained tank 57 peak and 227 DPS output now through my experience I uh, I realized I didn't really like this ship um, if you're fighting in a specific situation where you're taking drones and drones are shooting at you that's good but if you want to go out and take on more I don't know combat targets uh, and not blobs that are going to put a lot of drones on you or stuff like that I just found that I didn't like having that hardener I, I just, it ended up making the cap too unstable and the DPS too low those are my main problems with the setup so after a lot of experience and I don't know five ten wolves I don't like that setup it's okay and I think it's viable and it's good but I don't really like it um, it doesn't do enough DPS and speaking of DPS before I go any further I run cheap implants that's SX1 it, the, the names have changed since this EFT version I don't think they've updated EFT so the names of these implants have changed but the two implants I have here are a 3% to small projectile turret damage and a 3% to all turret damage so basically what I'm getting is a 6% overall bonus to damage cost typically 20 to 25 million for both of those um, and you don't lose your pod every fight so it's worth it to have both of them and get that extra DPS now let's see
All right, speaking of drones, before I talk about my other setup, when you're engaging drones, you do have good tracking, but you're not going to track drones if they're right on top of you. So I've covered this in the past in like in other videos and in uh, articles, I think. But if you start taking drone fire and you want to destroy the drones instead of just fighting through them, like let's say they're doing too much damage, your tank can't keep up, then what you want to do is you want to orbit instead of 500, widen your orbit to 5,000, run your micro warp drive, and what that's going to do is it's going to put more distance between you and the drones you're shooting at. So instead of them being all over you at less than 1,000 and orbiting you where you can't track them, they're all going to be trailing behind you, following you at 1 to 3K. And they're going to be, instead of moving around you, they're going to be behind you chasing you, which makes it much easier for your guns to track them. So if you're wanting to blow up drones, widen your orbit to 5,000 first. That's going to make it so you can hit them a lot easier. Um, now, I said I don't like this fit. I, I like it, but it's not my favorite. The biggest reason is DPS. So let's look at another setup. This is the setup that I like right now. And the reason for it is the extra DPS. It can do 272 DPS standard, right? It doesn't have a <clears throat> explosive hardener that I got to run. In its place, I have a reactive plating, but it's a uh, Plex reactive plating. I know it sounds like it's expensive. I think it's 5 million ISK, maybe 10 million. If you go to the level one Plexes, you can get it. Like level one Plexes in Genesis, they drop every hour. Um, there, you get so many of them that you don't know what to do with them. Um, so they're pretty cheap and uh, it's no big deal to throw that on there. It gives you more stats. I like it. So that's passive. You don't have to worry about it. I think the best PVP ships are the PVP ships that are easy to manage. Um, if you have a ship with an active tank and hardeners and <clears throat> you're trying to manage overloading everything and running everything and manage your capacitor and manage the capacitor boost booster, selectively overload your web, selectively overload, you end up with a ship that's so difficult to run that you become absorbed in running the ship and you completely forget about the fight around you and you end up making really bad mistakes. So I like to keep it simple with most of my ships. The less you have to do that has to do with running your ship, the more you can focus on what's going on in the fight and the more you can maneuver and uh, make better decisions throughout the fight. So another thing you need to notice here, it has a gyro stab. Other setup does not have a gyro stab. Now it does have less hit points, but not much. Actually, it has more hit points. How about that? Okay, I'm trying to figure out why. Oh, because the hardener's not running. Okay, there you go. So it has less hit points. 8,400, 7,400. 1,000 less. You can see this guy over here. His sustain 49. This one, turn off the micro drive. Sustain 48. Tank slightly better over on the other setup. And certainly a little bit better against drones. But against most targets and most fights you're going to have, like you'll be fighting some other assault ships. Um, we're going to talk about how you can fight recons. Uh, you can fight some hacks carefully. Um, you can fight all tier 3 battle cruisers. Those are just the easiest targets um, if you play it right. And, and lots of other stuff. So... I like this ship because it's easy to run and the DPS. Now, why does DPS matter? Why can't you just grind through a target, you know, have 100 DPS on your ship? And, you know, as long as it's enough to kill the target, why does it matter if you have a ton of DPS over just a little bit? Um, it, I mean, wouldn't it be better to survive and have less DPS and maybe have a better tank? Well, it, it actually works the opposite way. Um, the more DPS you have, the safer you are because the faster you're going to drop your targets you got to keep in mind the number one rule in EVE is that you will be blobbed and your opponent will always try to outnumber you and win by numbers and not skill. So keep that in mind. In 90% of your fights, you're probably going to have somebody warping in on you or approaching you. Whether you're at 100k and they're micro warp driving towards you or it's a, a warp isolation or maybe you attack somebody in a belt, they're going to have people warping in. The faster you can drop the target and get out, the safer you are. I mean, and that's something I've learned over and over throughout my experience. Every time I try to back off on high DPS, I end up regretting it. Because in the example of, let's say, the Tyrannus. The Tyrannus does just as much DPS as this ship right here. But it has less tank. Okay? Less tank. And a lot of the stats aren't quite as good. So the Tyrannus 
does tons of DPS for a little interceptor. Now to compare that to say a claw that doesn't do quite as much. It does maybe 190 um, compared to almost 300 from the Tyrannus. The, the big difference in fights is the Tyrannus will drop the target really quick and get out. The claw will tend to stick around longer and take longer. It still wins a lot of fights, but because it's on the field longer, it gets caught by the blob more often. And that's why DPS is so important. One, it shocks your opponent and overwhelms them and gets them to make more mistakes when they see their hit points dropping really fast. And two, the faster you can drop a target, the faster you can get out. So keep that in mind. That's why I love DPS. And um, I guess let's go ahead and talk about a question I get a lot. Why the wolf instead of the jack? Well, let's pull up a jack. Um, that's actually a gank wolf. That's not what I was looking for. But that takes it a little bit further. I don't like that setup, so that shouldn't even be there. Here we go, jaguar. Now here's a setup I like for the jaguar. And I'm actually going to start flying very soon. And what you immediately notice is it's passive. 100% passive. Nothing active on it that I have to run as far as tank. But also, look at the DPS. 186. That's 100 DPS less. Okay, it's a lot less DPS, but it's a lot faster. Okay? It's a lot faster than the wolf. A lot more agile. See the speed? 3,162 versus 2,457. And the agility, 4.9 seconds to align versus 6.1 seconds. Um, size, uh, much bigger. The Jag, because it's a shield tank chip, shield modules pen penalize size. So it's bigger, um, but it's faster. So it, it works out. Um, so why not the Jaguar over the Wolf? Uh, the DPS. That's why I prefer the Wolf over the Jaguar. It's just simply DPS. Um, and th there's more to it than that, but in the end, I'd much rather attack something and be able to drop it quick and get out than have perhaps more hit points or more survivability. There are other examples of this. That's a kind of silly fit. Like you can get 16,000 hit points and 100,000 passive tank and there's all kinds of crazy stuff you can do with it. But this one I like for the Jag and I'm very likely going to cover this in a future video very soon. But uh, tracking disruptor. I love tracking disruptors on frigs. Um, so big. If you get good at using out, using them, you can take on other frigates. Um, you can take on ships that would usually think they can drop you. It's it's a nice ace up your sleeve. Um, and that's a lot of times you want people to fight you thinking they can win. And then when all of a sudden they can't hit you, you know, by the time they figure out what's going on, it's too late and you've won the fight. So it's cool. Um, in times where I could get a really good isolation on the target, the Jaguar would be my favorite ship because of speed. But in other times, in most fights, uh, in the fights that I've been getting lately where I can't get as good of isolations as I'd like because people are um, evidently watching my videos and learning how I do it and they're making it hard for me to get them isolated, um, because of that, uh, I prefer the wolf. When I do get them isolated, I want to drop them fast because I know they're probably baiting me. Uh, all right, next thing. Let's see, I've got some notes here. I'm trying to make sure I cover everything. Okay, let's talk about the your rack. Now, you might have noticed how I have my autocannon split. Now let's let's do it the way that you'll see a lot of fits. Like if you look at a fit posted somewhere. No, I didn't want to do that. Okay, let's overload. You right click to overload in EFT. Now you see my DPS has jumped up. Let's actually get a good look at that. 227, 261. So a nice boost to my DPS output, but you see right here, this is an average. This is how long the EFT thinks my modules will last before they burn out. But it's an average number. That's if you did it like 100 times and on average it would last this long. Sometimes it would last longer. Sometimes it would not last as long. Uh, there's a random factor to uh, overloading and how much damage the module takes. So if you see here, a minute, three seconds. I'm gonna, modules are going to start burning out at a minute, three seconds. Okay. Now what happens when we put a little heat sink in between? 
minute eight seconds. Okay, so it gets you an extra average of five seconds. I know it doesn't sound like much, but in a frigate fight, uh, five seconds is pretty big. Um, I mean, five seconds more of this high level of DPS could certainly mean winning or losing. So it's little edges like that. That's once you get past a lot of the the big first hurdles in PvP and Eve. Eve becomes about little edges, uh, little edges in overloading, little edges in implants, uh, little edges in maneuvering. Uh, a lot of stuff becomes just the little edge you can get, the little bonus you can get. You know, an extra two percent here, an extra, you know, two seconds there. It's all about the little edges that end up adding up to a uh, to an overall superior pilot and ship. So there's that next note. Let's go. Uh, Okay, if you're fighting other frigates, just like I was talking at, with, about with drones, instead of orbiting at 500, I really recommend you use like a keep at at 5 kilometers. Do keep at 5 kilometers because if you're fighting, say, a Dramiel, which I don't recommend, um, it's possible you can take him, but tracking is going to be an issue unless you're running smaller guns. But if you do happen to fight a Dramiel, what I would recommend is that you do a keep at 5k, 5,000 meters. For one, that's going to lessen his DPS output a little bit. And for two, I mean, he's going to dictate range on you. So it doesn't really matter all that much. But just per chance that you get any chances to dictate range to him, which is not going to happen in most cases. That's why I don't think you should fight a Dremiel. But if you are fighting a small frigate like that, keeping it at 500 or 5,000 is going to minimize the transversal velocity and maximize your gun's tracking. So you're going to get more hits on the target and be more likely to do damage. And that's what you want to do. You want to drop them really fast. Um, you have the damage advantage, the DPS output advantage. So in that kind of a fight, you need to play to your advantages, which is you need to play to producing as much DPS onto the target as possible. Um, so play to your advantages there. Uh, next note, uh, let's talk about signature radius. A lot of people don't understand this. This is one of the things that's crucial in the mechanics of EVE Online that most people have no understanding of. So I'm not going to get into tracking. Uh, most people understand the basics of tracking. If something's moving fast, it's harder to hit, right? So if something's sitting still, it's easy to hit. If something's moving fast, it's hard to hit. You understand that. But signature radius and signature resolution are factors that a lot of people don't understand. Now look at the, the, the signature of this wolf. Without the microwave drive running, 33 meters. That means that it's basically a big 33 meter ball. So imagine a big ball that's 33 meters across. Okay? A 33 meter ball and that's the target the opponent has to hit. I know it sounds big but in EVE that's incredibly small. Now I want you to look at my gun here, the 200, mill 200 millimeter autocannon 2 and what you'll see here is a signature stat. If you were to look this up in game, that stat would actually be signature resolution. And resolution, as you know, like from your monitor, is the detail, um, the, the smallest detail that it can pick up. So basically what that means is that the, the smallest target that this gun can hit every time is 40 meters across. Anything smaller, and it's going to miss. Now, just... To give you a picture, let's. Uh, I did a little paint drawing here, and you all know how good my art skills are. But look at this over here. This is the frigate one. Now, a 40 meter circle, that's for the frigate turrets. So all frigate turrets are the same. So another frigate shooting at your 33 meter target, 33, that inside ball there, that's you. And this 40 meter ball, that's the resolution of your opponent's gun. So let's do this. And... Let's imagine that you're sitting absolutely still and your opponent's sitting absolutely still. Tracking is not an issue. So he can put his aim right on top of you, no problem, and he's got perfect aim. But guess what? His resolution is only 40 meters. So even though he's got perfect aim, some of his ships or some of his shots are going to fall outside of your target. Because that's the best he can aim. If you imagine like in archery, like you're shooting at a target and you have the same aim and the same force and the same wind and the same 
arrow every single time, but there's a slight variation in every shot, you see, so that there's a cluster of shots. And all the shots will remain within this 40 meter circle here, but that's not enough to hit this target every time. So what that really ends up meaning is that even though there's perfect tracking, uh, another frigate's gun is only going to hit the wolf 82% of the time. So only 82% of the shots are actually going to land on the wolf. Now let's exaggerate that and say you're up against a cruiser. And this is why I say when you're orbiting a cruiser, orbit at 500 with microwave drive off, unless you're webbed. Because the only thing that's going to hit you is drones from a cruiser. Even if you were to sit still, right on top of a cruiser that had no drones, look at this massive circle. That's the re signature resolution of a cruiser-sized gun. 120 meters, okay? So his shots are going to be landing at 120 meters. And, you know, he can't aim any better than that. So he just has to kind of randomly throw shots out there that he knows are going to land there. And they're only going to hit you 27.5% of the time. So only 27.5% of the time is anything going to shoot at you or be able to hit you from a cruiser, which is why cruisers aren't going to hit you as long as you're moving, for one, they can't track you. And for two, even if you're not moving, they're not going to hit you anyway most of the time. So with cruisers and up, your main focus isn't getting hit by their guns, unless they're missiles, which have become annoying um, for frigates to avoid lately. Uh, the bonuses to missiles have made them uh, very good at countering frigates, which I do not like. But you really, your only problem is drones um, on a big target like that. So I hope that kind of gives you an idea of how the signature radius works and how it affects the mechanics of, of getting shot at. Um, so let's go back over here. And let's see. And that's pretty much all of my notes for this. Um, I did have a note here about uh, the importance of high DPS, but I've already talked about that. So one more thing I want to cover um, before we end this video about fittings, and I'm going to put this fitting in the uh, in the, the guide that goes with this in the, the tactical cheat sheet. I'll put both of these, um, and maybe the next one I'm going to show you. But lastly, I wanted to talk about was the other possible setup for the wolf, which is the buffer. Now, I don't like this setup. It's got okay DPS. And you can see we don't have the implants in there. Otherwise, it would be just as much. I don't feel like doing that. But it would be just as much. Uh, if I can do that? No. Okay. It would be just as much DPS as this one. So if I had the implants, it would be 272. But same DPS, no active tank, um, better tracking because of smaller guns. Uh, and more hit points. But the thing I don't like about the passive setup, I don't like giving up agility. See, 7 seconds versus 6.1. Or speed, uh, 24 versus 21. I don't like to give those up to add the armor plates. Um, notably, there's a lot of situations where this setup will work better. And there's a lot of people who would argue with me and say this setup is much, much better. Um, I disagree. I like to be able to stay in a fight and count on the wolf's ability to avoid damage so that even though there's only a 48 DPS sustained defense, I know that most of the time, unless I've got a lot of drones on me, I'm never going to be taking that much. And I'll be able to just pulse my armor repair like once every 30 seconds and have no troubles. So that's it for the fitting video. Um, I keep the stuff in mind and you can find these fits in the tactical cheat sheet.